We have a really good show today explaining how Elon Musk plays the game better than anyone else and what his strategy is to achieve the impossible like full self-driving. First, we'll share a video of Muddy Waters Capital founder and CIO Carson Block as he believes Elon pulls rabbits out of the hat constantly and you wouldn't want to bet against him. Second, we'll review an analysis done by Brian Wang of Next Big Future showing how the speed by which Elon was able to build his XAI supercomputer data center in just 19 days versus the typical 365 days for other companies translates to 10 to 20 times more training for XAI models by end of 2025 through to 2027. XAI will be done before OpenAI and Meta even reach the starting line for training. This superhuman ability, as Jensen Huang has called Elon, also applies to Tesla. Finally, we'll show you the latest vehicle safety report for Q3 that Tesla just dropped. Drivers on Tesla Autopilot are more than 10 times safer than average drivers not using the technology. Once you see this and we explain everything here, you'll see exactly what Tesla's strategy is and the advantages. We've got Hans Nelson joining us. He's the perfect person today. He's got the uh, kind of knowledge of how AI and Tesla's uh, approaches. Thank you so much, Hans. Thanks for having me, Herbert. So let's start off with a couple of videos. We'll do this one first with um, this guy named Carson Block. He is the CIO and co-founder of Muddy Waters Capital. But uh, he explains kind of like initially he was a bear on Tesla. He turned into a bull. And then he's basically kind of explaining how, you know, Elon plays the game better than everyone else, pulls rabbits out of the hat. Let's watch what he says. This perfect balance between BSing and delivering. Okay. I mean, the cars drive, the rockets fly, um, the satellites work. He does these incredible things. Does he routinely overpromise? I mean, say things that it's hard to imagine he can say with a straight face. Yes, he does. But does that matter? Apparently not. Um, so yeah, nobody's played the game better than he has. It's it is a volatile stock, um, but you know it continues to get flows. Going back to what I said earlier, um, and mm. will continue to get flows. And I think what was really what everybody on the bear side missed about it, you know, the arguments were, oh, Tesla doesn't have the scale; it can't compete with Toyota, Volkswagen, blah blah blah. Um, and that's true; they didn't have the 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 sales base scale or the manufacturing scale. But what all of the bears missed and was what my epiphany really was in 21 was that Elon understood that the base that he, the scale he needed to have was capital base. And so when he was mm. able to yoke that stock price way up and have this enormous market cap, I mean, even, you know, even if uh, the company's bleeding billions of dollars and the stock is sinking, there's so much market cap that he continued, can continue to raise money and Tesla's not going bankrupt in the, you know, for a very long time. And that's what the bears missed because the bears were hung up on this, oh, it bleeds money, it's going to go bankrupt. Um, right. and, and look, I was in that camp for a number of years, but, um, but no, he, Elon pulls rabbits out of the hat constantly. Like it's it's one thing to bet on him or bet on Tesla, but I just I just won't bet against Elon. Um, I did in a minor way several years ago. We had long day mm. we had crash puts on Tesla uh, that almost hit and paid off, but no, it's just you can't bet against the guy. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll explain why that matters more uh, shortly. But uh, what do you think of his uh, his comments? Pretty good. One of the things that actually made me reflect on that is interesting is Elon's, you know, pivot recently away from volume on the vehicles and, and growing those as fast as possible and really doubling down on just the importance of AI overall. And and I think that is the overhang that maybe Elon feels personally for the market cap of Tesla that, you know, if we go back to those time frames, Elon did remark, he said, I feel like the the market cap, you know, the stock price right now is too high. And for, you know, a CEO to say that, you know, I, I think one of the things that Elon is reflecting on is 
the expectations that came with the you know essentially one trillion dollar market cap that Tesla had at one point in time um, that just the auto business alone without the autonomy piece it was pretty hard to justify a reasonable return on capital out into 2030 on just the delivery of you know 20 million vehicles if you're talking about margins that are you know roughly in line with the the margins that you would expect on an automotive company in the 15 to 20% range you know being on the high side so that I think really does drive home the need for Elon to really execute on that autonomy piece because without that piece, then you really don't have the overall cash flows on a, a company the size of Tesla that justify those large stock prices and market caps. And so that is is one thing that um you know, I was thinking about it and that plays into some of the other points that we'll be talking about today as well. But the thing is that Elon does typically execute on these large um, goals, even if sometimes it's late. I mean, the booster catch that we saw this last uh, couple of weeks now I mean, was such an incredible achievement uh, technically for them to be able to do that. And the sign that that actually is for SpaceX's ability to execute on their goals to make civilization on Mars a viable reality. You know, that that is a huge technical accomplishment. And I think that it is, you know, in the same realm of difficulty that delivering on full unsupervised FSD is going to be. And it does drive confidence that Elon can once again, like Carson said, pull a rabbit out of a hat and do something that a lot of people think is impossible and do it at a scale that makes all of the other players that the rest of the market has a lot of confidence in, like Waymo, um, make what they're doing really end up being insignificant overall in the marketplace. And that is what Tesla retail investors are are betting on. Um, and Elon has an incredible track record over the long run of being able to deliver on these crazy moonshot ideas, even when they're late. And that patience, you know, going back to uh, the famous Warren Buffett quote, the stock market is a mechanism that transfers wealth from the impatient to the patient. And I think that's especially true in Elon Musk's case, the people who have held Tesla since you know, the 2010s, the 2012 era have seen incredible returns on their portfolios. And I have confidence that the company that Tesla is today has the ability to continue to do that moving forward for the next 10 to 15 years. Yeah. I like what Carson said. What you just said, of course, is, uh, you know, <laughs> the cars do drive, the rockets do land. <laughs> Sometimes when he says these things, they actually get accomplished. But I think the big point is that Elon and Tesla, they're playing a different game uh, than everyone else is. And they play that game better than everyone else is. So now the game is compute. And the compute can solve autonomy and, of course, the bots as well. And no other car company is doing that. They're still focused on cars. Few are doing that. So as a reminder here, as we get into how it is that Tesla is, even on the compute game, they're beating all the others. We'll show you the details of that. But here you got uh, Elon just recently. He said this several years ago, but he repeated it just a few days ago where he said, if it were not for not, for not one, but two technology discontinuities, one being electrification, the other being autonomy, I think Tesla could not succeed without solving both. What he's saying is that there was a change, right? A tectonic change in the auto industry switching from gas cars to electric vehicles. But if that was just one, and that was it, Tesla would have succeeded, they would have done well, but it was just, it'll be a very competitive market by the time everybody catches up. But the problem is for the auto industry, there's two technology issues. One is moving to electric vehicles, the other one's going to autonomy, and that is where the big deal is. Let's listen to what he said here. That is a hard problem, I have to say. Um, in fact, if it were not for not just one, but two technology discontinuities, 
uh, one being uh, electrification and the other being autonomy, I think Tesla could not succeed without solving both. Not just one, but both. Okay. Um, so let's, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, that that is playing into the the point that I made earlier about Elon really feeling the weight and the gravity of having to solve the autonomy piece, um, not only from a market cap perspective, but also for a transition to renewable energy economy overall in transportation that, you know, if for some reason it was only gas cars that were autonomous, um, that would actually make it much more difficult for electric vehicles than to be competitive and for our transition to a renewable energy economy to be successful. Um, and so, you know, we have to make the transition to EVs and we have to make the transition to autonomy in order for EVs to really be the answer to transportation, you know, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now. Um, and, and all of those things are necessary for Tesla to succeed and for Tesla investors to succeed you know, uh, also on the back of that. So, um, yeah. yeah, very important. Very important. And then, uh, so the whole game now is Tesla needs to become a computing giant and to be able to solve autonomy. And so that's why we're going to talk first about XAI and what XAI is doing, Tesla, uh, Elon's other company. But when you see what he is able to do for that data center, you can then see what he's doing for Tesla's Cortex, which is Tesla's own data center. So there's uh, Brian Wang. He's um, Next Big Future. I've had him on this channel several times before. He does great research. He shared this, right? So we heard Jensen Huang of NVIDIA, and I'll play this clip where he said that it only took uh, Tesla, XAI, sorry, XAI, Elon, 19 days to build their data center, where it typically takes a company 365 days to do this. But when you translate this out and you you know kind of forecast this out, it will translate to 10 to 20 times more training for XAI models by the end of 2025 and all the way to 2027. Basically, other companies, because they're so fast in launching their data center, by the time the other companies even start, XAI is already well on the way of growing and buying more. He shares a number of tables. Uh, do you want to explain what this table is about? Yeah, so what Brian has done here, at least my interpretation of it, is that he has used a combination of the the capacity that a training cluster has in, you know, basically overall H100 equivalents, um, and then multiplied that by the training time they've done. And so he's using the the column there that says chip years, basically as a way to measure the cumulative amount of training that the three biggest AI competitors in the LLM space are going to be able to accomplish. Um, so those being Meta with their Llama models, OpenAI with their GPT models, and then now XAI with their Grok models. And so, yeah, the that cumulative number of chip years is yeah. essentially what the cumulative number or like amount of training that OpenAI has done. And currently OpenAI is kind of in the lead on this. Meta is rapidly, you know, catching up to them in the amount of chip years that they have trained uh, with their models. Um, but what we're looking at here is the rapid uh, acceleration of training that XAI has done. And overall, the this is leading to a trend where XAI is going to pass all the other mm -hmm. major LLM competitors in the cumulative amount of training that is done. And then if, if success is a function of cumulative training accomplished, then it's really hard to imagine a world in which XAI is not the like hands down dominant player in the marketplace from uh, an LLM AI standpoint. Yeah. So you can see we'll, here that yeah, let's yeah. move to the next one here in just a sure. second. But uh, by by December 2024, here by December 24, the end of this year, XAI is already going to be 33,000 years of accumulation. 
it's going to be already equivalent to llama and more than uh, than we're um, probably around the same as where the GPT open is. Open AI but, is yep. open AI is. But if you then carry that forward, by the time we're at twenty twenty six, Grok will be at sixteen million years compared to these guys at four hundred thousand by twenty twenty six. So the uh, four million, I mean. So the, the, it's like just crazy how um, they'll never be able to catch up is what Brian is saying. So he said this, Jensen Huang, the CEO of NVIDIA, described how XAI built a 100,000 NVIDIA H100 GPU AI cluster in 19 days. Other customers need a year, 365 days, or about 20 times as long to install the same size AI cluster. Jensen called the XAI achievement superhuman. The customers of NVIDIA GPUs have to work with NVIDIA hardware, software, data center, network engineering teams. The customers have to work with NVIDIA for the project plans and timelines. This advantage will be capitalized by XAI in a 2025-26 timeframe for a 10 to 20 times advantage in training AI. And then he describes the procurement in NVIDIA B200s is happening now, and they will be installed and ready to start training by the different companies. XAI will have its first B200 GPU LLM installed, trained, and released before OpenAI and Meta have finished installing their B200s. XAI will be done before OpenAI and Meta reach the starting line for training. XAI can triple or quadruple their training time, increase the overall training, and still beat the others to market. Before we get to this table, I'm going to play this clip from Jensen. The um, uh, first, first of all, uh, acknowledgement of, of achievement where it's deserved. From the moment of concept to um, a data, data center that's ready for NVIDIA to have our gear, gear there, to the moment that we uh, uh, powered it on, had it all hooked up, and it did its first training. Yeah. Okay? Correct. So uh, th that first part, just building a massive factory, um, liquid-cooled, mm -hmm. uh, energized, permitted, uh, in the short time that was done, I mean, that is that is like superhuman. Right. Yeah, there's and and as far as as far as I know, there's only one person in the world who could do that, right. you know. I mean, Elon is singular in this understanding of engineering and and construction and large systems and um and 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 marshaling resources. Um, Incredible. Yeah, just it, it's unbelievable. And and then and of course then his engineering team is extraordinary. I mean, the, the, the software team is great. The networking team is great. The infrastructure team is great. You know, Elon understands this deeply. And from the moment that we decided to get to go, um, the planning of uh, with our engineering team, our networking team, our, our infrastructure computing team, the software team, all of the preparation in advance, mm -hmm. um, then the, all of the infrastructure, all of the logistics and the amount yeah. of technology and equipment that came in on that day, yeah. NVIDIA, NVIDIA's infrastructure and, and computing infrastructure and all that technology, to training, 19 days. Hang on, you, just, you, you, know, you don't want Did 19? anybody sleep? 24-7. <laughs> no, no question that nobody slept. But, but first of all, yeah, some, 19 days is incredible. Mm -hmm. But it's also kind of nice to just take a step back and just, do you know how, 19, how many days 19 days is? <laughs> it's just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Right. And and the mountain of technology, if you were to see it, is unbelievable. Yes. All of the wiring and the networking and, you know, networking NVIDIA gear is very different than right. networking hyperscale data centers, right. okay? The number of wires that goes in one node, right. <laughs> the back of a computer is all wires. Right. And just getting this mountain of technology integrated and all the software, incredible. Right. Yeah, so so I, I, think, I think what Elon and the X team did, and um, uh, and I, I, I'm really appreciative that he, he acknowledges the, the the engineering work that we did with him and and the planning work and all that stuff. Um, but but what they achieved is is singular, never right. been done before. Just to put in perspective, hundred thousand GPUs. That's you know easily the fastest supercomputer on the planet as one cluster. Um, a supercomputer uh, that you would build would take normally three years to plan. And then they deliver the equipment, and it takes one year to get it all working. Yes. We're talking about 19 days. Wow. What's well, the credit of the NVIDIA platform, right? That it's the whole processes are hardened. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Every all right. So, yeah. So, I, 
the speed by which he's able to implement this is going to be the critical dif differentiator. This is XAI. Tell me how this also applies to Tesla's Cortex. This is XAI's Colossus, the largest mm -hmm. supercomputer in the world, but Tesla's also creating their own largest supercomputer in the world. Absolutely. And it is, you know, I think that it's difficult for some people to appreciate the the difference in the type of cluster it, you know it's not the same cortex is not at all the same cluster that xai just built with colossus that colossus is a larger version of essentially the same type of cluster that open ai has been building uh in part well really that microsoft has been building inside of azure for OpenAI to use. And then also that Meta has been building for their use with Llama, that the those clusters, they're not going to be identical, but they're going to be very, very similar. And a lot of the learnings from how those have been set up are going to apply to, to XAI. And I mean, Elon's ability to, like <laughs> Jensen just said, um, ability to compress the training or the, the the planning phase he said that that could take two to three years with most other com uh customers of nvidia's they compress that down to a matter of months we're not exactly sure you know jensen didn't say specifically how long it was the that they were working on that um we do know that xai is a company that's only about a year old and so at maximum um a year's worth of planning went into that it's probably significantly less than that so that's incredible but then you know the time period from delivery of the the actual servers and chips and and networking infrastructure and all of that um to the time that training was happening was 19 days that's that's ridiculous um this is not the first accelerated project that Elon has participated in with Jensen, that Tesla went through a, a round of this already with him, that they were able to get a large allocation of those H100s. And this is part of, you know, the the graph that Elon has shared about their desire to get to large, you know, scale on training. So Tesla had already done a round of this. And then XAI goes and they do a round of this and it's even bigger than the one that Tesla did. And now we're coming back to, to Tesla's cortex as they're scaling up. The challenge though is, is difficult for Tesla because they're not uh, training on just text-based tokens, which have low bandwidth. They're training on video and trying to feed the data into these clusters that are training on video instead of text-based data is a different and more difficult technical challenge. Um, and because what Tesla's trying to do is really solve a real world AI use case instead of a purely digital AI use case like you know, OpenAI and XAI and Meta are doing, um, that, that different application has different challenges. And so trying to keep large enough amounts of the data that you need close enough to the chips in order to feed them in a timely fashion so that they are actually being used at a high utilization rate, um, that, that's very difficult. Tesla is the only company in the world that is really trying to train on that much video data that quickly. And so they're already the world leaders in this. Um, and whenever they are able to actually get Cortex up and running, you know, they'll have another quantum leap forward in their leadership position in this AI video training space. Um, but this is the reason that Cortex is lagging behind Colossus, that while Colossus was an incredibly uh, impressive technical feat and accomplishment by Elon and the XAI team, um, what they're trying to solve with Cortex is an even bigger, harder, uh, and more significant challenge and when they get Cortex up and running, um, you know, I, I think what that signifies for Tesla's position in the overall, like all of the challenges that 
we're facing with robotics in general, whether it's FSD or whether it's Optimus. Those are software challenges, ultimately. And there's not going to be another player anywhere, you know, not a government, you know, not a company. Nobody is going to have the ability to convert real world video data into useful action better than Tesla because no one else is going to have this infrastructure that is specifically set up to solve this problem. Well said. Thank you for walking us through the difference between what XAI is doing and how it's going to apply to Tesla. But Tesla's differentiator is the video. He's changing the game. The whole game now is compute. It's all about autonomy. And um, it's, you know, when you see this. So <clears throat> let's take a look at this new next table. I think it says pretty much the same thing, right? Except that, um, I guess it's saying that, by the way, it says here by March 2025, XAI is going to be 200,000 H100s already. And uh, Elon already tweeted that out. He already posted that saying that <clears throat> if you were so shocked at how fast we got the 100,000, look how shocked you're going to be by the time we get to 200,000. Um, and it's already been delivered, right? May. So yeah, what's your, uh, what's, what's this table telling us? The Yeah, the big takeaway from this table is now we're looking at it by date instead of having, you know, mm -hmm looking at one section for mm -hmm. the GBT models, one section for the LLM, uh, the Llama models by Meta, and then one section for the XAI models. Now it's all basically arranged in date of completion. And, and what you can mm -hmm. see there is that in December of 2024, XAI is scheduled to essentially catch up with Meta and that after that point in time, neither Meta nor uh, mm -hmm. OpenAI with their GPT models ever catch up. will ever yeah, be able to catch up with the amount of cumulative training that XAI is going to be doing. Yeah. And just to put it into perspective, you know, if it takes and, and Microsoft is going to have to accelerate, they're not going to be able to take a year to do something that XAI yeah. took 19 days to do. So they're, they're going to accelerate. But uh, just using the numbers that we have to work with. 365 days to go from receiving your equipment to training mm -hmm. versus 19 days is it XAI is essentially 94% faster. That's 340 days <laughs> this year yeah. that Tesla can train on video with the like this is the biggest single supercomputer cluster in the world, yeah. as Jensen said. And so they get 340 free days of training on the world's largest supercomputer cluster compared to like, that's a lot of money and engineering resources and time that Microsoft is having to expend and that Meta is having to expend on just setting up the cluster without actually turning that on and yeah. getting benefit back out of it. And so the the AI ROI that XAI is right. achieving and it's a flywheel, with, with right? Colossus, yeah, yeah is yeah. you know, like he says, that can the buy only more. thing that matters yeah. is pace of innovation. And yeah. right now, training is directly correlated to pace of innovation. And XAI is able to convert investment dollars into training days. Far better than any other player on the market, and that's um, you know as far as if LLMs can get us to AGI, XAI is really the only horse to like. We're we're talking about a level of domination in this space that yeah. people just do not appreciate and understand. You can see Sam Altman of OpenAI already panicking. Uh, he's already you know, can you can hear about it uh, rumors that he's already uh, pretty pissed off at Microsoft, <laughs> very upset that this is happening. So how does this translate to Tesla? You know, even without these compute, it, 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 obviously we talked about XAI here, but you explained that it's also going to, we're going to start hearing this also in a Tesla's cortex. But even without the compute, we're already seeing um, actual real world impact. So the Tesla released their vehicle safety report for the third quarter. They recorded one crash for 7 million miles driven in which drivers were using autopilot technology. But the people who, uh, normal car drivers, it's one every 670,000 miles. So we're talking over 10 times safety if you use autopilot. If you compare, just in people driving Teslas, though, it's already a seven 
seven times safer than people who are not using autopilot but still driving Teslas. This is their report. You can see that there was a huge leap in Q1 of 2024. Kind of, you know, it's still going to be like variable here, but it's about the same as it was in uh, 2024 or Q1. But uh, clearly, they're showing miles driven per one accident is so much better than the United States average, which is the little gray bar here. This is without these supercomputers computers yet. And this is just going to change. Uh, James Dahm, a well-known machine learning expert, said this, Tesla's ADAS uh, reduces accidents. If you have a Tesla, you should use the advanced driver assistance. If you don't have one, you should consider getting one and use the ADAS. Every single thing about auto accidents is terrible. We now have the technology to reduce accidents dramatically. Um, he likes to post this, which is uh, another way to track to see how well this Tesla on autopilot is uh, improving. You can see that if you're a human driver, it's pretty well flat. Nothing is changing there. But over time, this you know technology is going to only get better. And it's just going to separate. It already is 10 times better. Why aren't you promoting this? Elon said the autopilot is a major safety improvement. Absolutely. Thoughts on this? I love to see this data. Um, one of the things we have to just keep in context is that as far as we can tell from the data that Tesla's willing to provide for us, you know, we don't know if when they say autopilot, they're just referring to like highway autopilot model miles, you know, versus FSD or, you know, what uh, specific forms of ADAS are they referring to when they, when they give us this data. So it's possible that there's some apples to oranges comparisons of, you know, like the the NHTSA overall standard, well, that's going to be all human drivers in all driving conditions, you know, both city and highway, you know, all times of day, all of these things. Um, and so that, you know, nicely growing line may not necessarily be fully reflected in the in the difference there. But the thing is that it is growing and the scope of FSD is also growing. And the, the trend line is pretty inescapable. And so regardless of whether the they are comparing apples to apples on this chart or not, the implications over you know any meaningful time frame are that you know it's definitely going to get better. When we talk about the the FSD cluster, like that's getting better. This, you know, all of these numbers are only going to get better over time mm -hmm. from here. And so this could very well be an apples to apples comparison. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying that we don't really have enough visibility into the numbers, or at least not that I've seen, to give us 100% certainty that there are apples to apples comparisons. But like I said, even if it's not an apples to apples comparison, the overall trajectory is 100% clear. This is the direction that it's going to go. I mean, just thinking about the active safety features alone and just basic autopilot functionality on the highway like alone, those two things, even if you're not paying for FSD, are huge factors that uh, avoid quite a number of accidents all by themselves in every Tesla on the road ships with those that's part of the reason that you see those differences in you know the accident rate in a tesla versus a non-tesla and the human driven you know portion that would be an apples to apples comparison and so they're already safer just in that and then yeah if you have more advanced features um it only gets better from there yep okay just to wrap it up here remember how we started there's two different uh big games being played here one is switching to autonomy very few of the other auto companies are able to make this move. Here's an example. Lucid CEO just said this, full urban autonomy won't arrive until 2030s. This is uh, Lucid CEO Peter Rawlinson. And he said that, uh, you know, the, you know they, that uh, we've got the best car in the world from a mechanical standpoint. And for most of it, most of its underlying software, that's of course, he's been boasting about this for so long. But he says this, what we, now, what we know we struggled with a little bit has been the autonomous driving features and a user interface, and we've made sweeping changes to leadership. I'm personally taking charge of this. We're really advancing this now at an accelerated pace. And then the complexities, he said, people are significantly underestimating how hard it is to reach full autonomy in urban scenarios, significantly underestimating. It's like refining gold to 99.9999%. The first few nines are easy, but it's the last 0.01%. I 
I can't see it really happening till the 2030s. I can't. So clearly that's his mm -hmm. position. Of course, he's not an expert in the space, has made zero movement in the space, but this is an example of what Elon was saying. There's Okay, great. You caught up in EVs, maybe, but you still can't even make it margin and pr profitably. But in the same time, the game is now changed and we've got supercomputers. Mm -hmm. What do you have? So. Yeah. And I mean, the thing that I would point out is that, okay, like the Lucid cars are incredible vehicles from a mechanical standpoint, but if you measure it on a value per dollar yeah. basis, they don't compete even close. And his unwillingness to make a vehicle that like there's just no path to profitability and it's it's an unsustainable unviable business so how do you plan to fund like if you think it's hard to mm -hmm. accomplish that autonomy goal that you've set for yourself how are you going to do that when you don't have cash to invest and yeah. the business model that they're trying to work on top of in order to accomplish that has no chance of providing the cash that's necessary to make the investments to solve that problem. And so, you know, I disagree that it's going to be in the 2030s. I think that, you know, Peter Rawlinson isn't even a fraction of the CEO that Elon is, and he thinks he's as smart or not smarter. Um, but like, if, if you can't understand that you have to have a profitable company in order to be a successful company, then like, I'm sorry, as an investor, you have just been uh, nixed from the yeah. possibility of receiving my investment dollars. And uh, yeah, so it, it's just, he's not someone who has the critical thinking capacities necessary to compete with Elon head to head. And I just discount the value of his predictions about EV technology or autonomy technology to almost zero. Yeah, he's just one example of all the autos. Great, great show today. Thank you so much, uh, Hans. Fantastic show. We, you know, explained a lot about the compute powers of XAI. You showed how it translates to Tesla and then um, the different game that Elon's playing. Appreciate this. Follow Hans on his YouTube channel, Hans C. Nelson. Thanks, everybody. I've created a website that is the most comprehensive resource for the Tesla investor. Please check it out. Simply go to my website at herbertong.com.